is 1-0 in the second inning, and we're joined by Diamondbacks GM Mike Hazen. Thanks for stopping by. I know this is, uh, I wish it was under better circumstances. Yeah. Uh, we had a little clip from Tory at the start of the show. What is the plan now for Shelby Miller? Well, the plan is a little undefined at, at present. We're still trying to, you know, put the information together uh, to ultimately help Shelby make the best decision possible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this this wasn't a situation where I think in some of these cases it's very clear cut. You know, the the, the path is, is very defined uh, once you go see the doctors, get the MRI. I don't think this is one of those cases it's, it's a little more it's a little grayer uh, and as such you know you need to weigh what the what the options are and there, there are options to rehab and there are options for surgical intervention and before we and he makes that decision we want to make sure we have all the information we need and it seemed like as part of that process that this was a very deliberate process getting a second and a third opinion from some guys who are best in the business as it should be you know when, when you're talking about this amount of time um, down regardless whether it's um, conservative or, or through surgery you know you can't rush into these decisions it, and on the front side we weren't there's nothing from a timetable standpoint that's speeding us up right you know uh, if it takes another week it's it's not changing the ultimate outcome um, on where it will be on the back end and so again we taking that time to make sure the process is is right for Shelby uh, because once we make that decision you know he's going to go through a process that that he needs to go through physically to get back on the field and that's a big piece to what's going to come next. Jake Lamb drives one to center Manuel Margo is there though and Jared Weaver has set down all four he's faced we're talking with d back GM Mike Hazen how is Shelby doing how's he taking this. Well he's taking it as well as you can expect um, under the circumstance I think he's very disappointed not being able to be out there with his teammates. Um, I, and, and that's on a group level, you know, I think with the start that we've gotten off to and he's been a part of that and, and, a, and, a, and a strong part of that and wanting to continue to be a part of that for any athlete, for any competitor. Um, and then obviously personally, you know, I think what he's gone through over the last year where he came into spring training, what he had done to put himself in a position to come in and contribute and show everybody, I think here, who he really was, who he has been for the last three years. It was impressive. Uh, it was. Really and, impressive. Yeah. And for that reason, I think more than anything else, uh, you know, myself personally, when I look at Shelby, that's what I, that's what hurts more yeah. than anything else is you, you saw what he put into it, having the conversations and wanting to get past what had happened um, and show the real Shelby Miller. And, and he was doing that. And unfortunately, that's been cut short um, here temporarily. Well, and now moving forward, I know the team has an off day coming up on Monday, so that kind of altered the rotation a little bit, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of discussions as to who takes his spot in the mm -hmm. rotation. Uh, any possible decisions there yet? Yasmani Tomas skies one to shortstop for Ibar. Two down. And yeah, we, we've we've had a lot of initial discussions. Uh, Zach came in yesterday and pitched really well, I think. Uh, we'll continue to rely on our depth um, from AAA. Mm -hmm. You know, this time of the season, there's no real trades to be made out there. Uh, teams are still assessing what they have, and so the market is, you're not going to be able to probably go out with one of the 29 other teams and get somebody, so we're going to have to rely on our depth um, in those cases. And as you, as, you, as you alluded to, with the off days we have coming up on multiple Mondays, you know, as you saw where we inserted Zach, you know, we're, we tried to give Taiwan and Robbie an extra day uh, and trying to build as much extra time in between starts as possible. We'll continue to look to do that uh, because I think we've just gotten through a stretch in April. We've had very few off days and we want to, you know, we'll, most of our off days are stacked in June and July. And we're going to want to we're going to want to make sure our guys are strong there, too. So. Those are all the dynamics we're considering right now. D-backs fans may say, why not ju just put Archie Bradley in there? And that's certainly a consideration and something we're going to talk about. Right now, he's throwing the ball really well in the pen. And But as you remember, when we went off into spring training, we talked all offseason about having six starters for five spots. And that spot didn't emerge until just now. Right. And one, he hasn't been stretched out as a starter. Um, so we need to, if we're going to make that decision, make sure we do that the right way. Uh, and then secondly, you know, there is, he's been elite in the bullpen. And so that's a factor, although any one of those things in and of themselves is not the driving determinant. You know, we want to look at both the short and long-term impact of our team, of our rotation, how the team's played, and how all these things come together. And your depth impacts that, the schedule impacts that, et cetera, et cetera. Here's Chris Herman up there with a 2-2 count as we talked to Mike Hazen. Fly ball center field, Manuel Margo. I've seen enough of this guy already. 
I want to hear guys from Boston. <laughs> Mike Hazen, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. All right, it. guys, anytime. Thanks, Mike. You got it.